from Left Side Right Side Games, I'm RDQ Pebbleton, and this is Chalking Points. We've got two numerical idioms today in honor of the double bundle package we're doing with the folks at Teacher's Professional Resource. They make a game called Who's Counting, but we'll get to that later. Let's get started. This first idiom I'd like to take on is at sixes and sevens. I think the first time I ever heard this expression was in a high school production of Gilbert and Sullivan's HMS Pinafore. The noble Captain Corcoran sings to the moon on the poop deck, which, okay, let's just take a moment to address this because I'm sure you're all curious, means rear deck and comes from the French poop, which means stern. The poop deck is merely the aft deck of a boat. Nothing to do with feces. <clears throat> anyway, the noble Captain Corcoran sings to the moon on the poop deck, saying, quote, Fair moon to thee I sing, bright regent of the heavens, say why is everything either at sixes or at sevens, end quote. This idiom means in a state of chaos, confusion, and uncertainty. It's been in English since the late 1300s. Its first English attestation is in Book 4 of Chaucer's Troilus and Crusader, as, quote, set the world on six and seven. End quote. It is supposed by several of my sources to refer to a particular dice game in which throwing a six or a seven had a particular significance. My idioms dictionary reads, the name of the game has been lost, but most likely betting on such a throw was very risky, denoting disorder and confusion. Now, at first this sounded silly to me because, uh, well, of the probability distribution for getting sixes or sevens with two six-sided dice. With two dice, you'll roll within the 6 to 8 range 47.22% of the time. Just looking at 6 and 7, that's 30.54% of the time. So, being at 6s and 7s sounds like it would be a relatively reliable thing, at least compared to the uncertainty of getting pretty much any other result from a pair of dice. But I kept digging, and it turns out that this expression might be connected to the dice game of Hazard, which eventually evolved into modern casino craps. In this game, you chose or were randomly assigned a number between 5 and 9, called a main. And then the results of your die rolls meant a different thing depending on the main that you got. 7 is the winningest main in the game of Hazard, and 6 and 8 are the least win likely. So if you're either going to get a 6 or a 7, you're in a state of confusion or disarray because you're either the most likely to win or the least likely to win. Now, on to the next idiom, the 11th hour. When something is done at the 11th hour, it means it's happening at the latest possible time, just squeaking in under the buzzer. Now, I always thought this had to do with the armistice that ended World War I, because it was signed at 11 a.m. on November 11th, 1918, the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month, declaring a ceasefire on the Western Front. This day is commemorated by the U.S. as Veterans Day, and by many other nations as Armistice or Remembrance Day. But despite all that, it isn't the origin of this idiom. No, this is another biblical idiom. The parable of the laborers from the Gospel of Matthew. In this parable, vineyard workers working a 12-hour day were paid the same wage as those who began their work at the 11th hour. Now, interpreting the Bible is a bit above my pay grade, thank you very much, but that's where this expression comes from. And we are at the 11th hour of this edition of Chalking Points. So, let me transition to telling you about the Brainy Game Bundle! Just in time for the back-to-school season, we've teamed up with the folks behind Who's Counting, an award-winning math game. We're selling Who's Counting and Word Frolic Village Idiom 1 together. Find out more about the Brainy Game Bundle in the links below. Look for us on Amazon or check out the link on lsrsgames.com. You can learn more about us and about Who's Counting at our website or at teachersprofessionalresource.com. Until next time, Laugh, learn, light up your language. I'm Marty Q. Pebbleton, and I'll see you around. All right, I've been waiting a while to deploy this one. First, watch this unbelievably funky Sesame Street video. Cool, now watch this Janelle Monet video. What do they have in common? Let me know in the comments. See you next week, Chocoteers, Chocoholics, Choco Tacos.